All right, it is about a little past 5.30 a.m., but I just got done a segment for Fox and Friends, so I am awake, I have my makeup on, I look okay, and I thought I would just do, um, you know, kind of a, an update video a little bit more obviously formally than I did yesterday to really lay out the full breadth of what happened. I know I posted, I think, three videos yesterday uh, from the walkaway rally in Dallas, Texas, through um, what happened to us at the police station, a little update afterwards, and it was all kind of choppy because that was just the way it had to be, guys. Um, so so here is what happened from the beginning. Yesterday, we had our Walkaway Rescue America rally in Dallas, Texas. Now, this is like the fifth or sixth one of these rallies I've done. I mean, they're always really great, really great crowds, really great energy, all that good stuff. But the thing is, uh, this time, we had a lot of Black Lives Matters protesters show up, and they had actually been posting on Facebook the night before that they were going to go protest the Trump rally. Now, those of you who follow the Walkaway campaign, know that we are not a Trump rally. Not everyone in Walkaway supports Donald Trump, and it is perfectly okay not to support Donald Trump and not to vote for Donald Trump. We don't particularly care if you do. What we do want to encourage people to do is to leave the radical left who is causing violence and chaos in this country and seemingly has zero consequences. So we had our rally. Um, Black Lives Matters protesters came. One of them attacked our security guard. I know in the video that I posted yesterday on this channel, the first video I posted from the rally, it looks as though the security guard, well, it may look as though the security guard attacked the protester first. That's simply because the angle on that video is not good. Brandon Strzok posted another video, you can look at it on his Twitter account, where it clearly shows that the Black Lives Matter protester had a megaphone in his hand and was pushing his hand and his fist in the megaphone into the security guard's throat. He did that before the guard pushed him away. That that was what was ha that was what happened. There is a video with a much better angle on it there. But um, sadly, our security guard was arrested, and along with the Black Lives Matter guy, they were both they were both arrested um, and and taken down to the Dallas police station. And they're going to, I believe, both of them are going to be charged now. They did not release our security guard for hours and hours and hours. And I want to be very, very clear about this. At the walkaway rally, the security guards did exactly what they should have done, and they kept everyone safe. They kept everyone safe. They, they stood in when the protesters started getting too close to the stage, and they kept them away. They kept every single attendee left that rally safe. Every single speaker left that rally safe. Every single volunteer, every single staff member. It was a safe event to be at precisely because security did their job. And so he, he, our security guard ended up getting arrested. He was at the police station for hours. Uh, the walkaway folks were trying to find the footage to show that the Black Lives Matter protester had attacked him so they could get him, frankly, released and not charged. I think he is still being charged as of right now um, because it seems as though the police chief may be in cahoots with the Black Lives Matter protester information that I'm sure that none of us are shocked by. None of us at all. So it was several hours later. We had come back to our hotel. We kind of taken a break after the rally. We decompressed. We went to the restaurant. We got some food and we kind of had some time to kill before dinner. And we had heard that Black Lives Matter was protesting outside of the police station and we knew our security guard was still there. And so we cut, we cut what the original plan was to just do a drive by to, um, to, to to essentially like see what was going on. That was the original plan. We were going to get in an Uber. We were just going to drive by the police station just to see what was going on. And then we we're going to go back to the hotel. That was the only reason I got in the Uber because I did not want to do this. <laughs> I was like, I'm staying in the car. I was like, I was even in like the back corner of the car. Um, and so we ended up getting to the police station. And uh, so there were, there were probably at least 50 Black Lives Matters protesters outside the police station, but there was also a row of cameras and a row of media there. And so Brandon was like, I don't want Black Lives Matter to be the ones dictating the story of what happened because they're going to lie. They're going to lie and the media is going to air it. And so he wanted to get out and make sure that he had a chance to talk to the media. And I was like, no, I don't want to do this. There were a couple of, like the car was pretty, like with the people we had with us, it was like kind of a 50-50 split. Like half people wanted to get out and, and go see what was going on. And the other half were like, no, this is too dangerous. We did not want to get out. But here's the thing. Once half the people got out of the car, 
the the Uber driver basically like he was nice about it. He didn't like it was he wasn't mean, but he basically kicked us out of the car. Like so, I I had to get out of the car. It was me and like one other person. We basically got kicked out of the car and had to kind of commit and go with the rest of the group at that point. And so we got out of the car, and I, I mean, all we did was stand on the sidewalk. I didn't say boo to anyone. I didn't say anything. I didn't, I had, it was sketchy too, because I had, of course, you guys know I wore my MAGA mask. I made sure all the Trump stuff was covered up. I was terrified. Um, I, I, you know, we, my, uh, Mikey Harlow handed me, he has a Keep America Great hat that he got from film being on the RNC uh, last week or whenever that was. And so he gave me that hat. I was holding it for him. I covered up everything. There was no, none of us, I don't believe were wearing anything Trump related. We were not wearing anything um, related to the right, but some of the pro, I mean, obviously like Brandon is very high profile so people knew who Brandon was and because we were with him we they knew they knew who we were but to be frank guys like I really think that you know I, I really think this is something that could happen to anyone that they just don't like the look of that that is the God's honest truth a lot of you have been tagging me it's like Carlin you have to get security I don't think it I it, it, they don't know who I am they don't know who I am it could have been literally anyone that this happened to and I really want to impress that upon you this could have happened to anyone all we did was stand on the side of the street that's it that's it that was all we did and so we got out of the car we're standing on the side of the street like literally directly in front of the police station with all the media now Brandon had said part of the rationale for getting out of the car was, um, and I actually agreed with this, to be honest, uh, was essentially that we thought that they weren't going to do anything. We thought that we're literally directly in front of the police station. There's a line of media. They're not going to do anything. They may yell, they may act fools, but they're not going to do anything. And that was incorrect. That the, this has escalated to the point where these people do not care. They do not care. They do not care who is watching because they know that they are not going to be punished. That is the thing. They know that they are not going to be punished. They literally did it. Well, a a reporter, a reporter, there is a reporter who has this entire thing on tape and he has released a little small clip it. And he told us at the end, he was like, well, this is the, the, like Brandon was trying to get the footage from him. And he was like, well, the footage is the property of this station and I can't release it without being subpoenaed. And so he tried to get the police to ask him to release the footage to us and he wouldn't, and they wouldn't do it. So there is a reporter out there, uh, Eric, I don't know Eric's last name, but, but he's, he's tweeted this footage out he has footage of literally the entire thing that he is not releasing so at least as of as of this recording i don't know that he's released it he's released a small snippet and it shows clearly we didn't do anything we did not attack these people we did not say anything to these people all we did was stand on the side of the street so anyway I'm sorry, I'm rambling. It's early. It's 5 a.m., but I want to get this out while it's fresh in my head. So um, we're standing on the side of the road. The protesters recognize Brandon. They come over and they start screaming at us. And the next thing I know, a bottle gets thrown at Brandon, like bounce off Brandon, hit me. <coughs> sorry about that. Um, so a bottle gets thrown and then the, the entire mob starts descending in and they literally, guys, they surrounded us. They, they, like, there was, like, a, like, there was an, an opening kind of in the back, but they, the mob had started surrounding, they were all screaming at us, they were throwing things. I had a street cone thrown at me, um, and it didn't, like, hit me or anything, it was fine, but, um, they just started screaming at us to leave, to leave, to leave, so we started walking away, and, like, I mean, very fast, we literally started walking away, um, as fast as I could, like, just walking and trying to remain calm, because here's the thing, too, if we had said anything, or if we had attacked these people, it would have been on us. Like it would have absolutely been framed as being our responsibility when it was not. We did not do anything and we were not going to do anything. And so we're walking down the street and they're just surrounding us and screaming at us. Now I had managed because I was like, again, I didn't want to do this from the beginning. So I was like, I like got the hell out of there. And so I was, I was ahead of everyone else. There were people behind me that got it far, like significantly worse than I did, but I was really like, I, I need to go. And I was trying to like get far enough away, but I also needed to stay close because they were the only protection I had. The walkaway people were the only protection I had. So I didn't want to get too far away from them at the same time because here's the thing, Brandon, I believe, I know Brandon 
was trying to call for help on his phone as we were walking down the street. I believe he called the police or 911 or something like that. Um, They didn't come out and help us. This happened directly in front of the police station. The Dallas police state, the Dallas police did not do anything to stop this. They did nothing to stop it. The only saving grace that we had is the police had barricaded off a few streets. And so I knew like four or five blocks down the street, there was going to be a group of police officers there because they had barricaded off the street, but they did not leave that post. We were like going towards them to try to get away from the mob, to try to get someone to help us, but they did not move. The police left us there like sitting ducks. That is the truth. And I don't blame the police officers at the end of the street because they were told not to move. They were told not to leave that post. So I don't blame them at all. Once we got there, they, they, you know, took our statements. They were, you know, I think it's probably as helpful as they could be in that situation. Um, but they were told not to leave their post. And so we had to run to them. So we're running down the street or walking very fast down the street. I think we were again, trying to like remain calm. Um, and then behind me, uh, Black Lives Matters protesters grabbed the phone of one of the walkaway staff members. I um, mean, he had a bunch of footage on it. And so we're still trying to figure out ways to get that footage because he has all the footage on his phone. Again, the police wouldn't go and recover the phone once it got stolen. So Black Lives Matters protesters took his phone. They smashed it on the street. They had it. Um, and then I, w- I had just at some point, and I don't know, guys, to be honest, how I had the frame of mind to do this because I was terrified and I didn't want to. I tried to take footage like a little bit earlier and I was just like so scared that I just immediately put my phone away because I didn't want to agitate them. But at some point, like something told me like, Carlin, you need to start filming, you need to start filming. And so I was walking down the street kind of going like this and just trying to film as much of what was going on behind me as I could. And then I I hear um, one of the walkaway staff members yelling, Carlin, Carlin, your phone. And the the woman, and you can see this in the original video um, that that I posted again. I'll I'll link it. I'll link all my original videos in the description below so you guys can go and watch them. I don't want to edit them into this video. I just don't want to. It's too effing early for that. Um, But uh, so I had my phone kind of like this. This skinny protester charges up behind me and she reached around and she tried to grab my hand and grab the phone out of it and I kind of did one of these and I just like I did one of these I kind of shook her she went that way and I ran I ran as fast as I could to the end of that street and I did not stop until I got there and Brandon was actually a little bit ahead of me and he said to me later when we were at dinner he said Carlin as soon as you got there your your whole your lips were completely white it was like it, I mean it was like I was in shock at what had just happened I I I I don't know what would have happened if the if we had not gotten to the police at the end of the street I really don't know what if we if it had just been that it was just us walking which is which is sometimes frankly happens at walkaway events like we don't take security with us when we go out to dinner after walkaway events you know i mean we have like there's there's really big like people in walkaway but it's not like we don't have security with us like 24 7 like like in ben shapiro or something um so uh so this if this had just happened to us walking down the street i just i don't know what would have happened i think that and it, and i think too it's important to note that um that that um Oh gosh, I had a thought and I lost it. <laughs> no, it, it's it's important to note that this this really could happen to anyone. Like this, it really could have. If you were walking down the street wearing anything Trump related, this easily could have happened to you. And that's that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You should be able to walk down the street in a major American city and wear whatever the f you want and be minding your own business and be left alone. But that's not what's happening in Dallas right now. I'm going to tell you this, too. On the way, so we got to the police. They took the report for the phone and what had happened. And, you know, I have um, I have a little police report thing that I have to, you know, talk to them about, like, whatever. Um, so so they did that. They were, they were as nice, I think, as police officers can be. Um, the reporter who has all the footage basically told us he wasn't going to release it to us. And looking at his social media, you can really tell whose side he's on. You can tell why he's not releasing the footage because it shows that we didn't do anything wrong. And what you guys saw in the videos, so, so that guy released a clip of it. And then, there, of course, there's my video of what happened. What you guys saw was not the worst of it. 
what you saw in those videos was bad, but it was not the worst of it. Oh, here's what I wanted to say. So um, it was, I think, I think all of us had the frame of mind to know that we could not fight back against these people. I think we all had the frame of mind to know that because if we had fought back in any way, other than just trying to get away, it would have been pinned on us. It absolutely would have been, but we did nothing wrong. We didn't fight back. Um, I, I frankly could have decked that woman that ran up and attacked me from behind. Um, <laughs> and I absolutely would have won in that fight, please. I would have 100% won. Um, but you know, you couldn't do it. So I just like shrugged her off and just bolted down the street as fast as I could. I know I'm not, you know, I'll look like much, but when I have an angry mob of people chasing after me, I, I find it within me to, fi to find the inner runner that I had six years ago. Um, so that's what happened. Um, I'm still very shaken up by it. It was like all, I think, I think we were all in shock last night, to be honest. I'm still shaken up. Um, it's terrifying. This is the reality. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say too is when we, so we talked to the police, um, we got an Uber to get the F back to the hotel. On the way back to the hotel, we saw a lot of people in a park in downtown Dallas that it looked like a, a metric F ton of Antifa, honestly. There was a whole bunch of them gathered for some sort of meeting or something in this park. They were all dressed in black, it was black block, really. Um, and so I guess like just really, if you are in the Dallas area, please be careful. These people are very, very dangerous. Do not go near them if you can absolutely help it. Um, I, I am very grateful that the, the only casualty that we had in this scenario was a stolen phone because it could have been so, so, so much worse. It could have been worse. But I want to say this too. Don't think that this has deterred us. We are not deterred. We are going to keep, so far as I know, as of right now, we are going to keep doing the rallies. We are going to probably, I'm sure, up security to make sure that everyone at the rallies is safe. You know, this is the, this is the reason that we are doing this. This, the, this exact scenario right here, the fact that we were attacked by an angry mob of Black Lives Matters protesters, the Dallas Police Department did nothing to help us. We were sitting ducks if they had wanted to do anything to us. Um, we are not going to stop. We are not going to back down. We are going to continue to keep fighting. And listen, guys, if, if we can show up after what just happened to us, you can show up too. If we are doing a rally in your city, you need to show up. You need to make your voice heard. This is not a game. We need to show people that there are so many more people that disagree with what is going on in this country tonight. But the problem is you guys don't show up. Everyone at the walkaway rally was safe. Everyone was safe precisely because there is security and security did their job. Everyone was safe yesterday. Show up, make your voice heard. And guess what? The more of you who show up, the harder it is going to be for them to do anything. When we were in Beverly Hills, where the thousand people that showed up to our rally, there was one Black Lives Matter protester, and they knew what their place was put, put in place by the goddess Shamika Michelle. Right quick, man. There was nothing that they could do. When you show up, when you stand up to people, when you say, this is not okay, there is nothing that they can do. So... This will not be my last walkaway rally. Um, I'm taking next week off, mostly because I have to go to Maine. I'm doing actually another um, rally in Augusta, Maine um, next Saturday. Um, I believe it's the 12th, but you can find, I'm sure, information about it online next Saturday. Um, I will be speaking at the state capitol in Augusta, Maine. So I'm taking the week off from walkaway, but I do plan to return after that. We're going to, I believe, this is the schedule as of right now. We're going to Tampa. We're going to, um, of course, there's the, the big unsilent majority march in Washington, D.C which if you only make it to one walkaway rally, you want to make it to the one in DC because that's going to be amazing. I will absolutely be there. Um, we're going to Phoenix. We're going to Nashville. We're going to Omaha, Nebraska for Brandon's hometown. Um, so we are not going to stop. There may be other rallies added to the list. Stuff may change. I have no idea right now what's going on. Um, but I know that I'm not going to stop showing up. I'm not going to let these people deter me. And I hope you don't either. All right, guys, that, that's all I got. I'm going to jump back into bed and try to get a couple hours of sleep or something. Um, but I fly home today, um, getting the F out of Dallas. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys soon.